So my name is Lukas Palka and I'm a street photographer in Tokyo. Born in Poland, grew up in the States since I was five, and about five years ago I came to Japan. After about a year living here, I didn't really get out of the house enough, I thought, to explore the city, so I got a camera, and I've been shooting for the past four years. I think that the, mo the motivation behind them is different and that makes a difference in the final result. Um, I don't necessarily look at a lot of, you know, people's photos, but like even just like on Facebook, my friends' photos, people who use their phones and Instagram, it tends to be photos of them and their friends or events that they've seen. But not a lot of people take photos of just people they don't know, the mundaneity. That, that's kind of one other way that I look at street photography. It's, it's pictures of stuff that is actually not very extraordinary. It's just these kind of really, you know, almost just pretty much, yeah, just mundane kind of things. It's just people on the street. Why is that interesting? You could see, you could go out of your house, see people on the street all day, every day. But that's the point is nobody really pays attention to that. So they don't value it. But once, if it's captured in a certain way, then when people view it, it, it comes with a sort of, it has a kind of an impact that people take for granted when they just see it themselves. And I think that's what the value of the street photography is. Not just my own, but all of it. So, I keep it simple. I just I shoot on a, on a Nikon D3 and a Voigtlander 40 millimeter lens. And that's, that lens pretty much never leaves the body. Um, I got, you know, for street, the D3 is kind of a big, loud camera. And I got that camera, though, because I really wanted to shoot at the 40 millimeter focal length. And so, you know, on a crop sensor, there wasn't any lenses that came out to about 40 that are as cool as that Voigtlander that I like to use. It just gives my photos a look that I enjoy, and so that's why I use it. Yeah, yeah, in, in addition to street, I do sometimes shoot, you know, um, nighttime, um, long exposure photos of like usually car lights going through the streets. Um, I like to shoot, you know, stitch together panoramas of the, of like the greater kind of views of the city. shoot some kind of iconic Japanese nature like bamboo and Japanese maple trees and that's just you know that's something I do just to kind of mix it up not to always be shooting street and it kind of it, it, it is a sort of a part of that greater narrative of this the city that I live in um, so yeah it's just an extra thing that interests me and I got the first camera it was just a it was something to motivate me to just get out and walk around, explore the city on my own. Because I used to, you know, I'd hang out with my friends when I went out, but I realized sometimes people are busy, I can't. It's like, well, what do I do by myself? Just walk around, it's kind of boring. So like, okay, I'll get a camera, I'll take pictures. And it just grew from there. Towards the end of 2011, yeah. I was started to have a portfolio of photos that I could be really proud of. And that was around the time that I felt like, okay, I'm a photographer. I guess. <laughs> Still not very confident, but that's how I felt. Privacy is very important in Japan. But in the same time, Japanese people are sort of a photographer culture. They take a lot of photos. And we have that stereotype of the Japanese tourist in, the, in Paris, you know, snapping away. Um, I feel that between those two things, somehow, street photography is just really accepted here. No, I've never, not once, have I had a problem with somebody getting upset or angry or anything like that. And in the same time, people 
kind of shy away from the camera a little bit if, if you get, you know, if I would get, were to get right in their face. But if you're just sort of shooting from, you know, from close but not too close, then people really talk, they, don't, they, they basically are very comfortable with the fact that they're being photographed in public spaces, I feel. As I mentioned, like, people think I'm a tourist. So that gives me this sort of cloak of invisibility in a way, where people just think, ah, he's just a tourist, whatever, let him take his pictures. I can get candid photos and candid moments without making anybody really uncomfortable. Yeah. I think that's unique. If I was shooting in New York, I don't think I'd have the same experience, or even in Chicago. I, think, I don't think so. So being me being a foreigner in Tokyo is a, is a special kind of circumstance for my particular type of street photography. I'm um, in the same time I'm part of the situation as the photographer. I'm, I'm interacting in that sense with, with the people in the environment. But I'm also a, sort of a passive observer. I'm not trying to force, force a story or force a narrative. It's just this is what it is. And of course, there's a, there's the, it, it's filtered through my brain, right? So whatever I'm interested in is what I'm shooting. So I tend to shoot, I tend to shoot um, you know, people with interesting fashion, good-looking people shoot a lot of women <laughs> because those things just interest me like I like that kind of beauty in human beings that's what I shoot but I try to be as passive and, and on without editorializing I try to shoot without any editorializing so as far as technique um, you know one thing that especially recently in my work has been, some, been something that I became interested in was the idea of, of motion I like my images to show that the subject is moving and I'm moving, the, the camera's moving, the photographer's moving. And that gives you this kind of dynamic quality. So to achieve that, you know, I, I need to be, it helps if I'm in motion. It's not, I guess it's not necessary because you can't really tell if the camera's moving necessarily. But when I'm walking through a crowd and I see an interesting subject, I will tend to shoot from the hip. Um, because then the, there's no lag where I have to hold the camera up to my face. Also the perspective is one that's from sort of low which takes the subject head on, it doesn't you know, aim down at them, so it doesn't distort them from kind of head to toe. Um, so that, that technique helps me get the look that I'm going for. Now how do you shoot from the hip? Well that's you know, really tricky, right? Um, I don't use autofocus lenses, I use a manual focus lens, and the most important technique for me is zone focusing, which is that I set it to a certain uh, focus range, and a certain f-stop and I just after a lot of experience shooting and trial and error I learned that like from here to there I know I can get the subject in focus and then from there it's just a matter of perfect time. However the lens is special for me I use that lens the, the Voigtlander 40mm f2 because I love that focal length basically I got used to the 40mm focal length when I was starting out and when I saw this lens I was just looking around online I picked it up and I got really, really comfortable and used to using the 40 millimeter focal length. I really enjoy it. And it's great in the light, and I like to shoot it wide open because it gives me the right depth of field for, for the look that I want, that kind of film-like cinematic quality. So, yeah. But I think any gear is fine, just that's the gear that I've grown comfortable with, and that's the gear that I use. Exactly. I try to, I try to make the subjects be part of their environment, but at the same time, jump out of the environment to be almost, almost this 3D kind of effect that I enjoy, that I like to produce, because I like to look at it. I mean, basically I produce photos that make me happy. When I look at them, I feel happy. So that's, that's where I'm, what my goal is, kind of a selfish goal. For style, I feel like visually I'm more inspired by, uh, not by other street photographers as much, though I am by some, like uh, Joel Meyerowitz, his style, like I'm inspired by that, I follow that. But I'm really inspired by films. So things like Blade Runner, um, Akira, you know, a lot of like science fiction, kind of cyberpunk genre films, really inspire me because I enjoy the lighting and sort of that kind of density of, of I don't know, of forms, I guess. Like it's very jam-packed. If you've ever seen Blade Runner, there's so much stuff there. And I like that, I like to kind of have like rich, sort of scenes in my photography. Blade Runner is inspired by Tokyo, and therefore I'm inspired by Blade Runner while I'm in Tokyo, so it kind of goes full circle. It's cool to be part of that, I guess. Um, so yeah, visually, for the visual style, I think those things inspire me more. I'm trying to tell stories about those people, but not really knowing myself what the stories are. It's just, this is what I saw, that's what I 
uh, captured and you can tell the story yourself. Whatever the story you see in there is whatever the story is. And I, I decide the environment first, I choose the environment first. So for example, you know, if I want, if it's nighttime, it's raining, I'll go to Shibuya because nighttime in the rain, Shibuya looks great. You get the light, it's gorgeous. And there's a lot of interesting angles and, and you know, the environment's pretty big, but at the same time, it's pretty crowded. And then I just, I just sort of feel it from there. I'll walk around and I'll stand around, I'll find a spot where the environment just speaks to me, it says something like this is a, you know, I see some beauty in it, something captivating. And then I'll just wait, and I'll wait for a subject. And that goes back to the wildlife style, right? Just waiting for that key moment. And then something eventually will happen, somebody will show up, and then I try to capture that. What would I say to someone seeing my work for the first time? I'd say, I don't know, whenever I show my work to anybody, I usually just don't say anything. I'm just kind of shy about talking about my work. I feel I'd rather let it just speak for itself and what people enjoy and take out of it is whatever, they, whatever that is, you know, it's up to them.